You can also use layer masks to blend two photos together. Notice that we have a tab at the top of our window with the name of each of the two photos that I have open in Elements. And I can click on those tabs to make that image the active image. I'm going to click on the tab for the photo that's named Boy at Piano. And that photo appears in the active image area, indicating that it's the active photo. I'm going to press Command A on a Mac, or it would be Control A on a PC, to make a selection of the entire photo. Now you can press Command or Control C to copy. Next, I'll click on the tab for the photo named Music Notes to make it the active photo. And I'll press Command or Control V to paste the Boya Piano photo that I had copied. We can look at the Layers panel and see that the Boy photo was pasted in as a new layer in the Music Notes photo. So I'll add a layer mask to the new layer by clicking on the Add a Mask icon in the Layers panel. I want to blend the layer of the boy with the background layer, which is the musical notes. To do that, we can use the gradient tool. It's located in the draw section of the toolbox. You can click on it there, or just press the letter G on your keyboard to make it the active tool. In the tool options, click on the arrow next to the gradient preview, and the gradient picker pops up. I'm going to choose this third gradient, which is called black-white. As its name suggests, this is the gradient that goes from black to white. And the other option that I want to choose is the pattern for the gradient. Those are represented by these five icons on the right. And I'm going to choose this first option, which is a linear gradient. And it was already active, but if it's not, you can just click on it to choose it. To explain how the gradient tool works, I'm going to show my rulers in the active image area. To do that, go up to the View menu and choose Rulers. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut Command-Shift-R on a Mac or Control-Shift-R on a PC. Now you can see that a ruler appears along the top and left side of the active image area. The reason I want the rulers visible is because you can pull guidelines out from the rulers. If you click and drag from the top ruler, you get a horizontal guide. Once you release the mouse button, the guide will be placed in that spot. To move a guide, switch to the Move tool and click and drag it to a different location. So you can see my cursor is basically the four headed arrows. As I get right on top of my guideline, it changes to a different icon. And once you see that icon, it means that you can click and drag to move your, your guideline. So I'll click and drag it down to here and then release the mouse button. And that's how you move it. And to remove a guide, you click and drag it off the edge of the active image area. So I can either click and drag it down here to remove it, or I could have clicked and dragged it off the top of the active image area to get rid of it. Now placing guides is not a regular part of this technique, but I'm doing it because I think it'll help to illustrate how the gradient tool works for those of you who aren't familiar with it. I want to place two vertical guides, so I'm going to pull a guide from the left ruler and I'll drop it about two-thirds of the way over on my photo in the active image area. Then I'll go back to the ruler and click and drag to place another vertical guide about maybe one-third of the way over. Now I'll make sure that the gradient tool is active by clicking on it in the toolbox. And remember from our options that we already selected a black to white linear gradient. How it works is I use the gradient tool to click and drag in the active image area while the layer mask is active in the layers panel. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that my layer mask is active instead of my regular layer. And I can tell that it is because it has the blue border around it. And you can click and drag in any direction that you want with the gradient tool, but I'm going to drag from left to right. The spot where I first click and begin to drag from, that spot and everything to the left of that spot will be solid black on our layer mask. 
Again, I'm going to drag from left to right. Photoshop Elements will take the area in between where I start and stop and will blend that area with shades of gray going from black on the left to white on the right. So I'll place my cursor on my vertical guide on the left side and I'm going to click and drag towards the right. And as I drag, I'm going to hold down the shift key, which will keep my line perfectly straight. When I get to the guide on the right, I'll release the mouse button. And I can also release the shift key. In the active image area, you can see that we have a nice blending of our two layers. There's a little trick you can use that lets you actually see your layer mask in the active image area and that is to hold down the Option key on a Mac, or it would be the Alt key on a PC, as you click right on the Layer Mask in the Layers panel. So I'll do that now. And this is what our Layer Mask looks like. I wanted to show you this to help you understand how the Gradient Tool works. Here you can see that everything from this first guide and to the left of it is solid black. Then, as it goes towards the right, it gradually gets lighter until it's completely white, starting from the second guide over on the right edge of the image. Now remember that white reveals, reveals what? It reveals the layer that it's associated with. And which layer is our layer mask associated with? It's the layer of the boy. So any area from that second guide and to the right of it is completely revealed or visible. And since we remembered that white reveals, that must mean that black conceals. So any area from the first guide and to the left of it is concealed or hidden on the boy layer. That means those areas are transparent, which allows us to see down to the layer below it in the layers panel. And that layer is our background layer, which has the photo of the music notes on it. The areas between the two guides are various shades of gray, and gray partially reveals and conceals, or we could say that gray areas of a layer mask are semi-transparent, so you can see some of each layer in those areas. I'm going to hide the layer mask again. You do that the same way you show it. Hold down the Option or Alt key as you click on the layer mask in the Layers panel. One other thing you should know about gradients. If you click and drag the gradient tool on an image that you already made a gradient on, the new gradient will simply replace the previous gradient. In other words, you don't have to undo your last gradient before you create a new gradient. The old one will automatically be replaced by the new one, and that's true no matter how many times you drag out a new gradient. And that's it for this lesson.